Hi guys, welcome back. This is FSX404. I've decided to redo my short field takeoff and landing tutorial. When discussing a short field takeoff and landing, we always take into account an imaginary 50 foot obstacle at the each end of the runway. Each plane has its own recommended short field takeoff procedures, but the short field takeoff procedure is very similar in every plane, but only minor details varying. The takeoff is done with a specific flap setting for each plane. The power is fully applied and the brakes are held until the engine power peaks. Once the engine power peaks, the brakes are released and the airplane rotates at a specific speed. Usually it's the normal rotation speed. However, the first 50 feet of the climb in a short field takeoff are done at a very low and specific speed. When doing a short field takeoff in a Cessna 172, we'll lower the flaps to 10 degrees. We'll add full throttle while holding the brakes and once the engine peaks, we'll release the brakes. We'll do a quick instrument check, all in green, airspeed is live. And we'll rotate the airplane at the usual 55 knots. But, we'll maintain a speed of 56 knots using our pitch during the first 50 feet of the climb until we pass the imaginary obstacle. Once we have climbed past 50 feet, We'll pitch the nose down and climb out at a normal Cessna 172 10 degree flap down climb speed of 65 to 75 knots. Once we reach 500 feet AGL, we'll retract the flaps and climb at our Cessna 172 best rate of climb speed of 74 knots. As a different example, a short field takeoff in the Cessna 182 is done with 20 degrees flaps down. We'll apply full throttle while holding the brakes, and once the engine peaks, we'll release the brakes. We'll take a quick look at the engine instruments, they're all in green, the airspeed is live. We'll rotate at 55 knots and maintain a speed of 58 knots during the first 50 feet of our climb. Once we've cleared the obstacle, we'll pitch down a little bit and increase our airspeed. Once we reach 70 knots, we'll bring the flaps up to 10 degrees. We'll climb at a speed of 70 to 80 knots. At 500 feet AGL, we'll bring our flaps up completely and we'll climb at 80 to 85 knots until we reach 1000 feet AGL. Once we reach 1000 feet AGL, we'll reduce our power to 23 inches of mercury, maintain a speed of 85 to 95 knots for a normal climb, and set our prop at 2400 RPM. When it comes to landings, a particular airplane's landing distance is usually calculated taking into account the 50 foot obstacle. The final approach speed is very important because even the difference of 5 knots can make a difference of hundreds of feet in landing distance. The short field approach speed varies on different airplanes and it's usually 5 to 10 knots below the normal approach speed. In the Cessna 172, the short field approach speed is 60 knots instead of the normal approach speed of 65 knots. So once we are on the final approach, we'll slow our airplane down to 60 knots using our pitch and we'll maintain the desired rate of descent using our power as usual. Another thing when practicing short field approaches is that we should remember the 50 foot obstacle. We'll come in and at the edge of the runway we'll be 50 feet above the runway. So we clear that 50 foot imaginary obstacle. Once we clear the 50 foot obstacle we'll reduce the power completely and get ready to flare. The flare has to be more exact in a short field approach because the airplane will not float as much because it is slower. So the timing has to be more precise. Once the plane touches down, we'll let the nose wheel touch down gently, we'll retract the flaps fully and apply heavy braking. If we do the same short field approach in the Cessna 182, we'll reduce our final approach speed to 63 knots. The normal final approach speed for a Cessna 182 is 65 to 70 knots. 
we'll control the airspeed using the pitch and maintain our rate of descent using the power again. At the edge of the runway, we'll be at 50 feet AGL. We'll reduce the power completely. We'll do a nice flare and once we touch down, we'll let the nose wheel gently touch the ground. We'll retract the flaps fully and apply heavy braking. 